Hey guys, we planted this garden tower three weeks ago. So let's do a garden tower tour. So let's start from the very top and work our way down. So these are the tumbling tomatoes, dwarf tomatoes, micro tomatoes that I planted at the top. So some of them don't have labels, but I know that this one right here is a tumbling tomato with a red um, tomato right here. We've got this small guy, which he's probably gonna be a um, micro tomato just by the size he is now. This guy looks like he might be a tumbler and the tumbling tomatoes are meant to cascade over um, whatever you put them in. These guys, I didn't let them cascade and I probably should have, but I didn't really want them to cover up any of the things that are below them. So I want everything to be able to get an adequate amount of light. So I went ahead and took some bamboo stakes and I took actual like twigs from the garden and I staked them up so that it would be some sort of neatness up there. We've got our dandelion in here. This dandelion blooms pink. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. We've got a small tomato here. This is funny plums and it is a, um, I don't, I think this one might be a micro, micro tomato because just I'm, I can tell by how quickly it's growing or not growing. So this guy is super short compared to these tumblers up here. Let's move past here. I've got a sweet pepper. This is a kitchen mini pepper from Veggio Garden and it looks pretty good. We've got some blooms in there, so we'll be having peppers soon. We've got a kitchen mini tomato here. Let's see, this one is cocoa tomato. So I can't wait to see how these change colors. I bet they'll be gorgeous. We've got dill. This is a dwarf dill, so it's great in containers and great in spaces like this. Another dandelion. We've got our micro tomatoes. You can just tell, like, look at that squattiness of this plant. Like, it's going to stay short and stout. There's another one here. And then we've got our kitchen minis. Is this hot tamale? Yep, hot tamale. So cute, so squat. And that's the first row. Very satisfied with, with this top row of plants. All right, now we're moving down to the second row and we've got some basil here. This will be the next thing that I come out to harvest and pinch. We've got some sorrel which looks absolutely beautiful. I love the red veining of these leaves. It's looking really good. It was very pathetic when I planted it in three weeks ago. My tarragon, if you watched my last video, whoop, sorry, I just harvested from the tarragon and dried it. Stevia as well, we just harvested in the last video. I cannot wait to start using stevia. Stevia is a sugar alternative, so I'm excited. I, I'm trying to get my health and life together, so I'm, tr I'm learning about different herbs and plants um, and just trying to eat much better. So right here we have an oregano. Yes, oregano. Sometimes I have to smell them to remember because this kind of looks like a little mint plant. Next up, we have a sage. I'll look up the exact variety of this sage, but it is absolutely gorgeous. If it's fuzzy, I want it. And look at this, the new leaves are so fuzzy. Look at that, so beautiful. And then that fuzz kind of starts to go away as it ages. Beautiful plant. This right here is, I believe this is marjoram. Oh, it smells so good. It smells to me like fresh laundry, but it smells so good. But I, I do believe that is marjoram. We've got another basil ready for clipping. Actually, no, this is this is basil from row three. It's just that tall. So that's 
basil row three introduce yourself hello we've got some sage here mmm smells amazing right here we have lovage and I grew a lot of lovage last season and I didn't really make use of it so this year I definitely want to make use of it for sure um, I have to look up some recipes I'm definitely gonna probably dry it and for sure dry it for later but I definitely want to try it fresh too and then I think we're back at the beginning with this basil and sorrel 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 I think that's I think that's the right way to say it all right now let's move down to row three okay row three brings us to our tall basil that was interrupting row two gosh this thing is huge i definitely need to harvest this very soon what's next on row three? Oh, we got a ground cherry now this is a pineapple ground cherry i've been so excited to try other ground cherry flavors um, I grew ground cherry two years ago and wasn't really impressed with, I think it was Aunt, Aunt Molly's ground cherry, wasn't really impressed with the flavor, but I'm interested in trying other flavors to see if we like them and see if we can incorporate them in any way into our meals. This right here is chamomile and it's already in bloom, look at that. I will be drying the chamomile flowers and having them for tea. Um, I'm looking so forward to that. And the foliage is just gorgeous. It's so fine. It's so soft. I love it. Right here is parsley, I believe. Let me let me taste it because this was the one that I did not label. So let me taste a little bit. Oh yeah, that's a. That's a variety of parsley. I'm not sure which variety, but it definitely has very fine foliage, unlike, um, you know, your common parsley. I'll have to dig through my seed order um, invoices and see exactly what this babe is. Let me try it another piece because I just want to make sure. Yeah, that's parsley. I don't like parsley fresh. The flavor to me is ugh but parsley dry and in Italian seasoning mixes, the best. We have a stevia here. This one got harvested. You can see from right there, that stem. That's where I made the cut. The next one is another sage. This one, this sage, I wonder if it's getting enough light. Well, actually, oh, okay. I thought it was kind of puny, but it's actually kind of long. So we'll, I'll leave him alone. We've got another basil here. This guy looks like he is trying to go to flower. So I'll definitely pinch him very soon. We've got another fuzzy sage. And then we are back at the beginning with the oregano. So now let's jump down to row one, two, three, four. So right here, starting with the borage, is row four. And to be quite honest, I probably shouldn't have put this borage in here. I knew that it was going to get kind of big and, and crazy. But I do like the way it looks. It's pretty. Um, it has that pokey foliage, which I believe is edible along with the flowers for sure. Next up, we have thyme. A little bit of thyme right here. I don't know if you can see that let's get in there we have a little bit of time in here and it definitely looks like it's not getting a ton of light and it could be too maybe I'm not rotating it enough to that area this like rotating the entire planter but I'll keep an eye on that next up we have marjoram and this one is doing really well this plant looks absolutely gorgeous next we've got a dill this dill is actually going to flower and this year i'm not really if my plants go to flower i'm not really fussing about it plants that probably that you want to harvest before flower 
I'm not really fussing about it. So this guy can go ahead and flower and bring in some pollinators. Right here, we've got some thyme. Here is, ooh, watch out guys, this one's in the way. We've got parsley here. Looks really good. Tastes ugh, when it's eaten fresh, but great when it's dried. Next up, we have a tomato plant in here. This guy looks pretty good. He's flowering, so that means he is going to be putting out fruit really soon. I don't remember exactly which tomato this guy is, but we will see soon when he starts to um, develop his fruit. Next up, we've got a basil. This guy looks like he is working on his flower too. Uh, but, and then he's got this big gap right here and I'm guessing he was stretching for light and that's why he's got that big, big space between his uh, leaves. Parsley. And then we are back at the borage. Now we are at row five, which is this row here we're almost done we have six rows on this tower so we've got a tomato here it's a dwarf variety it is blooming so we'll have some fruit soon um, i'm guessing i probably put tumblers over here tumbling tomatoes um, but who's to say things got crazy and i was planting i was doing mass planting so it it could be I doubt it's anything like indeterminate, but you know, I wouldn't put it past myself for it to be crazy indeterminate tomato. So right next to it, we have another tomato. It's this guy here. He kind of looks, I, I bet these are tumblers because of the height that they're getting, the length. Tomatoes are vines actually. So um, he's, you know, coming down like a vine. He's growing out of the container very much like a vine we have oh, another tomato here this guy has not started to flower yet let's go past him and see what's down there okay so now we've got our first squash let me move this board up so we've got our first squash plant there this is a container variety of squash um, I'm not exactly sure which type it is. I grew a couple of different types and once once everything got outside, um, you know, the tags got kind of blurry and murky and yeah, so it's, it's a patio variety. So we'll see what it turns out being. Then we've got a basil right next to it. And next up, oregano. I love me some oregano. Oh, that smells so good. Next to that, this is a type of basil. I'm not sure exactly. I'll look it up and put it on the screen, but it's like, I love the foliage of it. It's so cool. And that's why I chose it. Super cool leaf. Then we've got sorrel again, red vein sorrel. Now, is this the beginning? Cause I see two, a tomato here and a tomato here. So we might be back at the beginning again. Yes, we're at the beginning. Now it's time for the last row, row six. Last but not least, let's start with this borage here. So here are the borage flowers. These are edible and you can use them in anything. So salads, I've seen people freeze them into ice cubes and put them in their drinks. Um, at the moment I, I am blanking on other uses, but yes, they're edible and you can use them for many things. Moving aside, we've got some stevia down here. This base or this borage is so prickly and so itchy, but we've got stevia down here looking amazing next to stevia. We've got another one of those. Um, parsley plants this one is super tiny it's getting you know these leaves are blocking the light from it I'll have to cut those back so it can get more leaves it's okay to cut back some of your squash um, leaves if necessary I wouldn't I wouldn't cut back too many but definitely if you need to 
add in airflow for other plants around your squash, you can cut those um, leaves back a bit. So next to that is another squash. And this one has a yellow fruit. So let me find it so I can show you. Do you see that? Let me get that leaf. Trying not to break anything. So there it goes. Little squash plant, super cute. And then what's next? Another squash right beside it, which actually is genius on my part because then it makes it easier for pollination if you have your squash plants close together. So this one has another yellow um, squash on it. We've got some little flowers that are yet to open, but we can see that these are gonna be a yellow squash. Next to that, we have a dandelion. Can't wait to see that pink dandelion bloom. Dandelions are 100% edible. There's another dandelion. I put two of them together. And then we have parsley down here looking great. This parsley looks amazing, healthy, happy. And then another parsley. I don't know what's going on with the planting. I must have got real tired by the time I got to the bottom row as far as like spacing out, you know, different things, but it's okay. But these two look gorgeous. They look happy and healthy. And then here is that borage from the beginning of row six. Growing in this system has been really nice. I really don't have any complaints about it at all, um, at least not yet. There hasn't been anything that has been like a glaring red flag or issue with this tower at all. So, I mean, I'm enjoying it, uh, but I will keep you guys updated on every single thing about this tower. Again, I won this in a giveaway, so it's not something that I purchased. Um, it is quite costly, so if you're in the market for a tower, there are cheaper ones out there. But I will say this, that this tower is heavy duty. We literally just had tornadoes come through, and this tower did not budge. I mean, this dude is solid. He's not going anywhere. You're not going to knock him over if you accidentally bump into him. Um, but yeah, but he is on the costlier side so this one the package that i have that comes with the wheels that was i believe three like over three hundred dollars i'll put the actual price on the screen so that you guys can see it i did become an affiliate with them so if you want to purchase through my link you can um no pressure to do that because you know this is a big purchase at the end of the season, we'll decide if if it's worth it, if the harvest from here is good. I mean, a tower like this or another tower is perfect for those with small spaces. So if you just got a patio, if you've just got a, a deck, a porch that gets full sun, a any any sort of small space that can fit the base of this tower you can grow so much food in this i mean you could start growing in early spring and do a early you know a spring crop so like your lettuces your you can grow kale you can put all kinds of stuff in your cabbages have it early and then once you harvest those things you can move on to your summer stuff so you can put your herbs your tomatoes your squash like you could really like maximize this um if you wanted to and you can just use this solely for all of your growing it holds 50 plants and then you can also compost in place so here is where you would put composting worms and you would add in soil and scraps from your garden there to help feed them and what the worms will do there's that tower has lots of holes throughout it so the worms can crawl 
out of the holes into your garden or like into the soil they can eat material from there they go back into the middle of the tower lay their casings and then you harvest those casings down here at the bottom so there's a tray that pulls out and see how that kind of is the filter there with all those holes and then you can harvest from here now there's a lot of water in here because we had a bunch of rain i'll just dump it out but typically i just dump it right back into the tower and it's brown because of the soil the soil's brown and then we stick that back in there so yeah your casings would be in here and this would help filter them out so it's a neat little system again it's an investment so if you're invested in you know growing this way and you want to try it out i definitely at this point would recommend it but again i have not gone a full season with this so i still have many videos to make on this and then um, we'll decide at the end of the season if it is worth the money so far i'm liking it though it's been super easy all right guys that's all i have that's the three week update so i mean these plants have grown a ton since we put them in three weeks ago and i'll show some before and afters but yeah check it out let me know if you guys have any questions about this video if you have any questions about the tower or the plants in the tower leave them below and i'll answer you in the comments and then I'll see you in the next video. Bye.